How's it going YouTube? This is Strange AI and today we have the What Did I Buy series. Um, this is number six. Crazy. It's been six weeks already we've been doing this. Pretty cool. Been fun. Seems like everybody's enjoying it. I will break down how this all works to start and I don't have to say during the video but uh, $1,400 for what you see in front of you. This is a purchase from Japan. Uh, why it's always $1,400 and around that is simply because I ship orders of 200,000 yen or less from Japan, typically less than 200,000 yen because it never equals exactly that. That would actually be like a, a unicorn scenario if it added up to perfectly that. But yeah, 200,000 yen and that equates to with shipping roughly like $1,400. Um, it's always up and down based on the conversion rate. And um, yeah, the basic goal here is to get inventory to number one grade. And if it's not gradable, list of singles. Uh, the way I do it is I don't like to take too many risky, you know, moves or purchase things, with, you know, super high dollar. So I like to buy things that I feel like are either A, underrated, or I feel like are really good value. So that when I buy this stuff, you know, you get this card and, you know, hey, this isn't gradable, but I can still sell it at a uh, raw for either profit or break even worst case scenario. So, and if it's gradable, comes back a good grade, you know, I could sell for a decent amount of profit. That's basically the goal. Um, that's how I do things at least. And I'm sure most people do something similar. Uh, some other people take a little riskier chances. Some people take a bigger gamble on more modern stuff that everyone else is creating. Um, that stuff usually will move faster, but profit margins will be lower. And there's also risk if you get like an eight, nine on something like that, you lose money. So this is just the way I do it. Um, that's basic breakdown. And uh, yeah, we'll jump into this. We'll go through this, look at uh, not each individual card, but each unique card, and then look at, uh, look at a copy of it for a condition. So first up, we got Sabrina. This is from the Yamabuki City Gym deck because it does not have the symbol. Um, I think it's Yamabuki, right? Yeah, I think she's Yamabuki. Mm, pretty normal wear on that one. Nothing crazy, but definitely not probably gradable. And just so you're aware, I will be going through this in depth uh, by myself, like under a light to do condition for singles and for grading. I don't just, you know, say on camera here, oh, I think this is this. <laughs> just send it off for grading. It would be stupid. But we got Misty here from Jim, non hollow. Looks just typical wear and tear, too. Not too bad, not, not great. Um, Chansey, one, two copies from Base Set. Um, Chansey, yeah, decent amount of wear there. Probably like moderately played. We have Lapras from the Quickstarter deck. Easiest way to tell that over vending. I say this all the time is just no rarity symbol. Um, also, it's not glossy when they're from the Quickstarter. <clears throat> it's actually a really nice Lapras, but the Lapras is not in the greatest condition, unfortunately. All right, we got Slowbro from vending. This one is from vending. You can see the gloss. That's actually perfect right after the other one. See, it looks like there's a bevel up here, like an edge, but um, in reality, that's just the way they are because they're peeled off of sheets. It's not damage so much as just what results from peeling them off the sheet. Doesn't look too bad. I don't know. We'll see later on. Got one copy of Dark Slowbro from Rocket. Nice hollow on that one. Uh, you guys probably will. One thing I didn't mention in the beginning, there's a potential that you'll see the condition and little nicks, um, scratches, etc., etc., better than I can, just because I'm looking through it at a distance from the camera. Whereas you know you're getting this full zoomed in version on your phone, or especially on a on a big screen monitor that uh, I can't see quite as well just looking through my phone. So if I say something's near mint, which I'll do a little zoom in. Never really noticed. I don't know why I never noticed, but there's a Team Rocket goon in the back of this slow bro. It's pretty sweet. But yeah, if I see something's near mint or something and, and you notice that it's not, don't think that, you know, I'm not seeing it. It's just, well, I'm not seeing it. I just can't see it as well as you can. And I will be going through this stuff later. But all right, we got Wigglytuff from Vending. One, two copies. This is a pretty cool one. Um, I, I don't really get the background, like what was going on here. Like Wigglytuff's like in a cave, like singing it look, kind of looks like a sugimori background to be honest but it's a uh, nishida artwork but kind of a cool wiggly tough from vending oh yeah a lot of love going on there i got blossom two copies this is from the info pack don't remember what volume it was but uh, pretty cool card nice unique artwork from japan 
really pretty card. Um, got potentially some print lines, but that looks like a pretty clean copy from the back there. All right, well, that does it all for the uh, old back stuff already. I'm gonna shuffle this stuff over. There we go. All right, we got new back now. Uh, it's what all this is, so we got a lot to go through here. Sit back and relax, enjoy the ride. Uh, we have Gyarados from Stormfront. One, two, three copies. I like that card. It's a nice, nice Gyarados. Gyarados doesn't have too many bad cards, though. Oh, yeah. Big indent there. Nice clean card, and then, whoop, big indent. Yikes. Nice one here, too. We have the Poke Parks Mud Kip from P PCGP. Got the Slowpoke. Psyduck chilling in the background. Got one, two, three, four copies of that. Oh, yeah. We got a lot of wear on that one. These were given out at, like, oh, yeah, big dent. Uh, in, in cello packs. I think at the Poke Park event is how they were released. That's cool. I think each one was given out at like a different ride. I think that's how it worked. I think for the PCG promos. There's ones, other ones from the folder. Uh, we have Low Pony TPP promo, one, one copy. Well, are these the same number now? So this one isn't the match, but there's a, both of these are DP card exchange promos. But there's a, another low punny that matches. This is a kind of an interesting one because it's like a sideways artwork. I don't know what the whole perspective of that was, if it was a mistake or it just fit better in the frame this way or, or what. But it's a nice card, though. Oh, yeah. Nice thing there. But the thing about this is, is like it's perfect. Like if I have to sell this stuff for all, it takes out a lot of steps involved and it also takes out a lot of investment. I mean, you think every one of these cards that's gradable, it's $15. So if I'm sending this in bulk, every one of these, if I'm grading it, is $15. So anyone that I take out, you know, yeah, it's not gradable, but I'm saving $1,500 on grading fees and putting it towards something else um, that deserves to be graded, which is why uh, it's, it's important to, to do good condition scanning, especially on stuff that, that has a lot lower value. Oops, excuse me, the camera. Uh, a lot lower value uh, because you're, you're saving yourself money, you're becoming more efficient, and you're sending in the stuff that's worth it, and then you're offloading the stuff that you know, is better suited to be sold as singles. It just makes more sense. Uh, we got Benary here, though. This is also, again, like I said, a DP card exchange uh, promo. One, two, three. Really pretty hollow on that one. I really like, honestly, I love card exchange hollows. I'm trying to think if I have any in my collection, to be honest, though. I feel like one of the Pikas I might have. Maybe I'm just drawing a blank, too. But we got Ursaring, Golden Sky. Two cop, yeah, I didn't even show that. Two copies. Yeah, Ursaring, normal wear. Well, probably more moderate wear and tear on the sides. Uh, we got Garchomp from the Garchomp half deck. Nice hollow on this one. We got one, two, three copies. Beautiful sparkle foiling on this one. Hopefully I'm showing off a lot of stuff in these videos and maybe some people have never seen. Um, ooh. Yeah, Garchomp seen better days there. A lot better days overall. But yeah, hopefully people are seeing some stuff they've never seen before, really kind of enjoying and appreciating the artwork. Because, I mean, as much as I'm showing off stuff that I bought, like, that's kind of, like, the whole purpose of it, too, is just, you know, hey, yeah, I'm showing off stuff that I bought, kind of going through it. and But at the same time, like, hey, like, a little bit of art appreciation as well. So just my two cents there. Uh, or at least my hope, I should say. But we got Rayquaza here, also Poke Park promo. One, two copies. Kind of a weird Ray. I don't know. He's got like one little tooth hanging out, but I don't know. I don't know if Ray has teeth or not. It's hard to hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> this looks like a pretty clean copy. Oh, nope. I lied to you. I got that. So not not a pretty clean copy other than that and that. <laughs> it's a good card, though. It's a good promo. All right, we got Eevee. Uh, PCGP promo. This is the Meiji promo. Meiji's like a chocolate company. Got one copy of Eevee. And Eevee looks like it's been loved by uh, its previous owner. We have Butler Salamence here from the VS pack. Probably one of my favorite VS pack cards. And I would say potentially my favorite Salamence artwork of all time. Uh, at some point when I grade a 10 of this, I'll probably end up keeping one. Just because I just feel like this is a really unique, like, epic artwork. But, yeah. Not great. Not bad on that one. 
how we have Latius here. I don't remember what the beginning name of this 10th movie promo is, but uh, they all have like extra names from the from the binder. It's like a binder set, basically, or a file. Nice swirl on this one. Mm, first glance looks pretty clean. I guess we'll see later on. Might be a winner. Uh, is this Lycia? I can't remember. It's been a while. I think this might be Lycia. I could be completely wrong. If there's any waifu lovers out there, I'm sure they'll be pretty angry with me on that one. But this is from uh, Shiny Collection. She looks like she's got a lot of wear and tear on the sides. Might have been a playable card at one point. I don't know. Uh, we got Latios. One, two, three copies from Dragon Selection. Nice little lip up there. So nice little fold or bend here. This is kind of like luck of the draw too. You guys might be seeing all the bad copies in the back. You might be seeing, you know, half the bad copies in the back. Or you might be seeing all good copies. I know the other week we had a really good one we went through. And looked like a lot of prospects just from first glance. But I won't really know until I get deep in there and, you know figure actually like see things under a light box and, and in my face rather than through a camera but uh, just like the latios there we have latios from dragon selection one two three four copies this is a cool little subset for sure there's definitely there's an english equivalent as well yep not that one it's kind of crazy how clean some cards look though and then you know, you flip it over, you catch it in the right light, and you're like, oh, hey, there's a dent. We got Rayquaza, same thing, Dragon Selection. Three, four, five, six copies. This is a nice card. I've sold a bunch of these in 10 over the years now. It's pretty popular, I would say, overall. Mm, oh, yeah. Front one's looking rough, big time. And back one. Mm, yeah, not too great either. I mean, you win some, you lose some. Again, that's why the whole goal of this is to pay a price that I feel comfortable with. Because if it's not gradable, it gets listed as a single at some point. And, you know, maybe I make a couple bucks that way or, you know, break even and off it goes to a good home. But we got Tyranitar here from DP2. <coughs> Excuse me, I think. Is this Temple of Anger? No, Secret of Lakes. We got one, two, three, four copies of Tyranitar. Not bad. And pretty bad on the back of this one. Uh, Farina's Absol. One, two, three copies from the VS pack. Pretty clean on the front of this one. Other than that. Not bad on the back of this one. A little whitening there. Not sure if it's worth grading. A lot of this stuff is dropped significantly in value when it's not a 10. So, I mean, you have to, like... For me, like, at this point, it's just become a vibe. I know that sounds really stupid, but just a vibe where I'm like, all right, like, you know, this one might not 10, but to me it's worth sending it in at $15 to get graded. Or it's like, oh, this one isn't quite 10. It's better to sell it in your mint. Um... Then, and it's probably more profitable to send it in your mint than it is to, to grade it. I mean, not that I don't make mistakes in either direction there, but it's just general, the, the thought process. We got Rocket Gang Strikes back here. We got Meowth. One, two, three, four copies of Rocket's Meowth. He's like, ooh, you gonna grade me? Maybe, buddy, maybe. Not bad, not bad. Looks pretty clean there. Uh, Tyranitar here from Stormfront. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine copies. All right, all right. Got nine copies of Tyranitar. This is a rare from the set. This is really pretty artwork. Another kind of like sideways thing going on here. I wonder what that's what that was all about. I wonder if that was just a lazy maneuver for them. It, it didn't fit right. Um, Cause I mean, why else would you do that? Like why would Tyranitar be like that? Huh, interesting. We'll never know. Oop, big zoom in there. Yeah, this one's, you can see the marks on this one pretty quick. All right, we've got a couple energies here. We got play promo energies. Let me zoom back out a little. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know what this is. I don't remember what these are. This is like warp energy, I think. This is like boost energy, I think. And I don't know what this one is. Maybe cyclone? Yeah, cyclone. Oh. Well, it's not near mint now. It looks pretty clean, though. Little lightning. And then a uh, mark in the middle of the card. <laughs> we got two of the cyclone, or uh, two of the warp. Nice little line down the back of that one. And then two of the boost. A lot of pretty energy cards out there, that's for sure. Ooh, yikes, yikes. But, you know, when you're looking at this one from the front, you're like, oh man, perfect binder copy for somebody. Like I said, I think, pretty sure there's a decent amount of energy collectors out there. Speaking of that, we got, these are cool. I really like these. We have Lugia. Uh, these are from, I think this is Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Uh, the two sets, they're two halves, I should say. I want to say I think so. Or maybe it's Reviving Legends. I don't know. But either way, the energies came with, like, artwork on them, which I really wish they would do something similar to this nowadays, too. But we got one copy of Lugia. Yeah, I was going to say that these would not surprise me, you know, at the price I paid that this is probably like two bucks a piece or something for the user, something around there that um, these would be damaged considering they were probably put in decks a lot back in the day. This is probably like the flashy version of, of having energy in your deck. We got Celebi, Grass Energy, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 copies of that. And don't worry, there's an Umbreon, so we'll get to that. Ooh, this one don't look too bad. And yes, these are gradable. Um, some of you are wondering. I mean, it, it's Celebi on a grass energy. It's like a unique card. Like, people collect this kind of stuff for sure. Ooh, nice dent in the front of this one, but cool card. And this one's probably, like, the one of the most popular, just, like, usual with Umbreon. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven copies. <coughs> Excuse me. Pretty clean on the front of that one. Little neck right there, looks like. Mm, not bad overall, but yeah, not mint. Uh, we got Dark Hypno from Rocket Gang Strikes Back. One, two, three, four, five copies. This is a really nice card, actually. Really cool artwork with them. Waving the uh, amulet back and forth. I wonder if we do a zoom and if I can just look better this way. Maybe I'll start doing that. Yeah, there's a scratch there. Not too bad other than that, though. Well, I lie. Up in the corner there. I don't know if zooming in is better. I mean, you guys are probably seeing, like, into the center of the universe when you look at that like that, but... All right, we got Mewtwo from the 10th movie. Again, this has a name in the front. I don't really know what, what it is, but we got one, two, three, four copies of Mewtwo. Not too bad. Nice card. Oh, yeah, the back of this one. Oof. Mint, right? This is, uh, I say it a lot in these. This is, this is mint condition or near mint on uh, TCG Player or eBay or Troll and Tutor, stuff like that every once in a while. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, we got the Ditto Mr. Mime, one, two copies from Holland Research Tower. There's also a Meiji promo from PCGP of this as well. Don't look too bad. Yeah, first glance, both of those don't look too bad. Alright, we got Gengar from Stormfront. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven copies of Gengar. Mm, don't look too bad. Not, not terrible. Yeah, I mean, you still look too bad. A little bit of neck on top of this top one here, but... Got a lot of copies with chances there. It's like if one of those becomes gradable, I mean, that's huge. So, uh, this card, this is, I had bought in so many copies of this card. It's such a tough card to grade because of the glossy finish. And um, I'm not sure how it was released, but I have to assume in, in some way where a lot of them got damaged. But we got the Drachi here from ADVP. Beautiful, beautiful Nishida card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven copies. 
It was an absolutely gorgeous card. I prefer this one over the uh, the hollow version. That's I think it's what Team Magma vs Aqua in English. I think. Oof, that's ugly. Otherwise, that one looks clean though. So yeah, it just makes me wonder like what's going on with these that they end up like that. Maybe I'll get lucky one day and grade a ten of this, and then maybe I'll just throw in my collection. Even though I'm sure a ten is probably worth a ton of money because how hard they are to grade. But it's an absolutely beautiful artwork. Good old Jirachi. Jirachi's kind of like an underrated legendary Pokemon, or I don't know, maybe it's not. Maybe there are plenty of people that like it, but maybe it just takes more time for it to catch on because it's not Gen 1. So we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, we have Giratina here from PT1. I think this is Galactic's Conquest. One, two, three, four, five copies of Giratina. I uh, actually showed this alt card off probably in one of these videos already. I uh, bought some copies before, and I also just graded a 10 of this the other day. So, <coughs> I might actually grade two 10s of this. But, yeah, these, this copy don't look too great, but this is a fantastic artwork. Uh, this one, not quite as, as, uh, as exciting, a little lackluster, but we have Giratina from Cry from the Mysterious. Yeah, not screwed on that one either. I uh, have two Slowpokes here. It's kind of funny, different typing, but Slowpokes are next to each other. Uh, we have Slowpoke here, Meiji Promo. Again, that's a, the chocolate company. Um, this is a pretty cool one. Stock Ken Sugimori artwork. He's like, got his legs in the water. This is like the equivalent of like how how poor my thumbnails are for my videos. <laughs> like That's like the kind of editing going on there. But I like this promo. It's a cool one for sure. A lot of damage on that one these come in cello packs too so it's they're not very rare per se i think some of them are from certain because they were obviously like uh they released like in different months throughout all pcgp and like other i think even adbp and other eras too yeah absolutely bwp etc etc yeah um and i think some eras may like have lower production but for the most part they're not rare but to get a good mint copy a lot of times is just because of them being given out by a chocolate company and cello packs really pretty one here by kasube we got Slowpoke from wind from the sea one copy Slowpoke appears to be in pretty decent condition uh, we got War Turtle here from the E Series starter deck. Would have been awesome to see new rarity symbol there, but the odds of that is uh, pretty low. This one doesn't look too bad either, first glance. Another E Series starter deck, Todoral, Chasing the Oddish. Pretty sweet artwork. Oh, yeah. Big, big carnage up top there. We've got Blastoise here. Um, this is from one of the, like, I, is it Blastoise and Kiram? deck or something along those lines or Kirim, white Kirim versus black Kirim deck or something like that. I don't know. I was going to say, based on the way it felt, I know it sounds weird, but you can actually feel sometimes when cards aren't in great condition. Like, it's kind of like anything. Like, it has a certain pliability to it. Like, like cardboard or paper. Like, I don't know if it's pliability and rigidity may be the word I'm looking for, but uh, when a card gets more worn out, like just grabbing this it just feels softer in the hand like it feels like softer to bend it like you, you can kind of see it and it doesn't mean it's fake but i mean you see all this wear and tear in this so this thing's been you know this thing's been loved but it, it, it's weird like you can almost feel too when something is like crispy and mint because of the way it feels in the hand and the way it sounds when you slide it across i know that's like super nerd now and that's like insane obsessive compulsive but like after you do this for so long uh there's just certain things you pick up on and that's one for me all right we got kyogre here uh advp promo i think this is core core magazine one promo or yeah one promo one uh one copy yeah pretty beat up it's pretty normal for those the glossy ones this is a tough one as well to grade now uh, we have the blastoise I don't know if this is Coral Coral as well. I can't remember, but it's a tough grade. Yeah, way beat up. Uh, we got Totodile. Again, E Series starter deck. One, two copies. Don't look too bad, does it? I oh, know. Got a nick down there. See that? False hopes. All right, we got Crocodile. 
Uh, again, Easter you started at. Good artwork, though. I have Menno. Oh, yeah. Not great. We're 25 minutes in, and I guess realistically we're probably halfway, but uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to pick it up a little here. But I say that every time, and then it ends up going to like an hour. So hopefully you guys are still here. If not, you know, thanks for thanks for the time you did spend. Appreciate it. But we got Blastoise, two copies here. This one's hollow. There is a non-hollow version of this as well. From I forget what deck this is from. I feel like I do pretty well remembering what some things are from and what they, you know, what their release was. But there's just certain, I, I can't remember all these little side deck things half the time. Especially if I don't see them often enough. Yeah, this one's not great. Uh, we got PCGP Poke Park Suicune here, one copy. Nick down there, see so yeah, this one's already, yeah, this one was loved. Uh, we got Vaporeon, one, two copies from AG. PCGP promo. Yeah. This is weird. This is something you see a lot on this era of promo, too. These, like, lines or streaks. Almost like they're, like, rub marks. They're not scratches. Almost like it's, like, a scuff. Um, yeah, this one's got some, some wear and tear in the back, too. This one's... Ah, oh, this is such a fantastic one. We got the Ken Sugimori Squirtle. Also a Meiji promo from ADVP. One, two copies. Beautiful artwork on this one. That one's beat. All right, we got Suicune. One, two copies from Shining Darkness. Oh, yeah. Got Blastoise, Galactic's Conquest, one, two, three, four, five, six copies. I don't know how many times Jimeno's done Blastoise, but again, there's another sideways one. What the heck is this all about? I never like really looked at them like this too, so it's like seeing it from a different perspective. Like it's like how's Blastoise sideways like shooting? I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what the thought process was. Again, I feel like it had to have been something quick and lazy uh this was 2008 so this was during the the recession i think this is kind of like a slump for pokemon so maybe the budget was tight and they're like hey we can't we can't afford to do another one of these or pay him in like just rotate it put it on the card sideways call it a day might have been what happened there <coughs> um yeah not bad well scratch it but not bad for just a, a copy you get randomly like this i guess is what i'm saying um you gotta think how old this i mean 2008 i mean what are we at there 15 years you know just that card's been floating around for 15 years and now all of a sudden it's here in my hands i got one two three four copies of blastoise from i think cold flare it's kind of a good blastoise it's kind of a weird one Maybe a little thick but Yeah, a little waiting on this one, but some scratches. Piplup, fan club promo, one, two, three copies. Beauty, beauty. Yeah, big scratch, big time. Uh, Lapras, Mirage Forest, one, two, three. Uh, nice Jimeno artwork again. Oh, yeah. It's like a smear of oh no that's on the card i think oh no it's a smear we won't ask what it's smeared with yeah i mean this is just like you know what i mean i, I get up the, the question a lot like how do you source cards where do you get them from like how do you do all this is this if there's just some sort of magic easy button to to grade and and make money off of this stuff and it just it's just not how it works and you know the end of the day if you don't have a passion for what you're doing and i think i've said that in numerous times if you've watched my other videos it, it just takes passion for what you're doing to really be successful i think you could be average at something it doesn't you know if you if you don't have a passion but i think to be truly great or really good at something um yeah you have to be passionate about it you have to be involved in the topic you have to love the the content the material and you know for me i love pokemon and you know it's been a part of my life since i was a kid 
And for me, like this stuff doesn't just discourage me because again, I'm following my own parameters of, of what to buy and, and what to pay. And, um, you know, meanwhile, there'd be a lot of people that would source this, like, oh my God, I can't believe we got a card that's on your and not gradable. It's like, well, it's not how it works. If it did work like that, then, you know, there wouldn't be really any money to be made because every card would be a gem mint 10 or everybody be doing this. And just, I don't know, I uh, just, just people don't think logically a lot of times with this kind of thing. I'm hoping with this channel to, to spread more of that logical thinking, you know, both in the hobby and hopefully outside the hobby for people. I'm not perfect by any means, but, uh, just something I've, you know, I'm a little older than, you know, 34 now, just stuff I've learned over the years that hopefully if you're younger than me that you can take and learn earlier. And then, you know, when I'm 44, you know, I'll say, man, 34 year old me was stupid, but you know, at least 34 year old me knew some things and I'm better now, but you know, then 54 year old me be like 44 year old me was stupid. And isn't, isn't that kind of how it works or it should work like that. I mean, you know, you're always getting better. You should be always trying to get better, always trying to move forward, always trying to evolve, you know, no pun intended there, but you know, digress a little from the topic and the subject matter there. we got a little philosophical, but just, uh, just the way I look at things, but moving on, we have this stunning mud kip in hollow from the Mudkip Constructed deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine copies of Mudkip. I would have to say Mudkip, as far as the three starters from this, is probably my favorite. And then I would probably go Trico and then Torchic. But I don't think Swamper. I think Sceptile is my favorite as far as the final evolutions go. A little scratched. Right, we got Gyarados, DP2, so as a Secret of the Lakes, he is the secret in the lake. <clears throat> not too bad, not too bad. Possibly, possibly. Didn't I show this one off earlier? Did I? Let's backtrack here. Bear with me. Did we show this? Yeah, we did. So there's more copies of this card, actually. I don't know how this got split up. We got more copies of the Gyarados. So for any of you guys think that... I think, I think there's some people that think that I... And, and, and given, this is just speculation, but I would have to assume uh, with the, the low traction I have on, on YouTube right now and, you know, the low amount of subscribers that... You know, people think I'm just making content and pulling these cards uh, out of my ass, basically. But um, I, I buy a lot. I've had a lot. I have a lot. Like, it just is what it is. But, yeah. So we had more Gyarados there. Huh. I don't know what happened there. Do we have more of those other Gyarados that I showed off from Secret? Or do maybe... I don't know. I don't know what happened. We're going to spend too much time worrying about it, though. So let's move on. Near... All right. All right, we got Groudon, EX. This is, again, is a Coral Coral promo like the Kyogre from earlier. One, two copies of this. The, yeah, I was going to say, I'm not expecting anything from these, really. Although this one. A little something on top of this. It's got the beveled edge because, again, these were like, I think these are like pulled off of a sheet as well from the magazine. I don't know. I don't think that one's uh, i'm not gonna get excited about anything like that because it's just the likelihood of those being tens are just pretty much almost zero when you're buying them i uh, got lucario here um uh, bw3 can't think of what this one is there's also a promo version of this one too in bwp as a stamp across of it not great uh team magma zagron one, two copies. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can see the whitening immediately on that one. Nothing really to talk about there. We got Groudon EX from BW3. Yeah, Nick at the top. This is a good artwork, to be honest. Is this Shizuru? Yeah. I don't know. It's just a really, for, for a base EX, it's a really good one. Uh, we got Lucario, one, two copies of Lucario. Man, 
Man, we're at it's three in the morning here. I, I was hoping to be done by three. I don't know what my I guess I got my time's all messed up or something. But <sighs> tenth movie promo. I think I already saw the back one is oh yeah. This thing if every card could tell their story, this one would have a, a hell of a story to tell. Oof. We got Lucario, DP1, Space Time Creation. Nice card. That's a nice back. Uh, Ultimare's Kabuta, or Kabutops, excuse me, from the VS Theater Limited deck. Yeah, not too great. Um, oh, these are BWP promo. Uh, Zach Groms, what is this from? Is this from like a trunk or a box set or some weird thing? think it's something like that oh we were talking about the other one being thrashed this one's got a story to tell as well oh, oh boy but everything you get from japan's mint remember the haters will tell you that it's not but i mean i just proved it right here everything you get from japan is mint mint you see it you see how mint this card is as I reflect all the scratching on it. Oh my god, look at that corner. It is mint. It is chiseled from marble. That's how clean it is. Mint. That dent is mint. Everything you get from Japan is mint. Alright. Now that we got that over with. Just know, everything from Japan is mint. This is an easy thing to do. Everybody can recreate it. Alright, moving on. We digress. <laughs> we got Shinks. DP card exchange. One, two, three. Really pretty card. Nice scroll on this one. If you're wondering why I like the DP card exchange promos, because realistically they are just reprints with a hollow back from, from the set, like so Diamond and Pearl reprint. Uh, I just like when, when cards, like Pokemon like this that normally wouldn't get a hollow, get a hollow. I just think it's cool. All right, we got Pichu, Soul Silver, one, two, three copies. Yeah, we gotta get cruising here, guys. We're at like almost forty minutes. And my phone just said low power mode, so I guess that's pretty typical. If you watch my videos, I, there's a nice little crease there. Not, not typically many videos where it doesn't go into low power mode. I just I am terrible with charging my phone. It's just something I'm not great at. I should just do it when I go to bed. But I have one of the pad chargers that that when you put the phone on, it like lights up. And I guess I could just throw, like, a shirt over it or something. But I hate seeing that light. I like, like, pitch black when I sleep. So it prevents me from charging. I guess I could also just get a cable, too. But, you know, we're making too much sense here. We got to stop that. All right, we got Charmander. I uh, love the Delta Species thing, uh, typing here. This is the glossy version from the Shogaku Khan Elementary School uh, giveaway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight copies. Kind of funny i feel like we're seeing darker copies as we go through there but maybe it's just the lighting yeah maybe i'm just maybe i'm just going insane which is very very likely at this point what we got left Oof. all right and i still nick these are not expecting much from either these get i mean these are given to elementary school kids as promos like but i mean need i say more i mean these things probably got thrashed and loved and pocketed and and all kinds of stuff all right we got pichu here from expedition non-hollow rare love this artwork man that one doesn't look too bad interesting we got right you here soul silver one two three copies we're gonna start cruising a little bit faster here so if I'm not paying the respect some of these next cars deserve, I apologize. You'll probably see them again at some point. All right, we got Electabuzz, Galactic's Conquest. This is the Secret Rare base set reprint with the foiling. One, two, three, four copies. That one looks darker for sure. Four copies, though. Mm. Lightning for sure. I talk about these all the time with this type of foiling from this era. They get a lot of chipping at the edges, which, I mean, you can see kind of there, there. Just, it's not like really damaged as much as, I think it was an issue with the, the burning process. 
Uh, we got Charmander, Meiji promo. One, two, three, four, four copies. I'll right, we'll take a look at Charmander. It's just a Sugimori background, but he deserves a little love. Yeah, I mean, this thing's... Ooh, well, that's mint, right? Uh, Charmeleon, Meiji. Mm, a little wear and tear on that. Poke Park's Torchic, kind of a cool one with Munchlax, Skitty, and, uh, yeah, Meowth in the background there. Yeah, nice little ding in the corner of that one. All right, one, two, three, Arcanine here. I think this is, BW3 might be Hail Blizzard, actually, now I'm thinking about it, but I could be wrong. I mean, the, the first copy is not great, but that doesn't look too bad on camera. I love that I'm sure, like, some of these cards look terrible that I'm saying look don't bad, like, don't look too bad. And some of you are like, oh, my God, dude, is this guy going to grade this up? Uh, don't worry. We'll catch it later. I got it. We've got Entei, 10th movie. I actually do know the name of this one. This is Crystal Towers, Entei. One copy of Entei that is not great. Uh, one, two, three copies of Ho-Oh, Meiji promo from PCGP. Some scratchy scuffy on the front. And it got hit with Buckshot on the back, as you can see here. Perfectly normal. All right, I got McDonald's Vulpix. I like this one with all the Vulpix running across on this one. They did the lines, and it had one in focus to kind of portray that. Mm, not terrible. Uh, one, two, three copies of Ho Oh from Shiny Darkness. Yeah, not too bad. A little neck in the bottom. Uh, this is Reshiram BWP promo. One, two, three copies. This is, I think, this is from the same thing that that uh, Zachram is from. That little trunk gift box, whatever thingy. Oh, yeah. All right, we got Fan Club Chimchar. One, two, three, four copies. Not terrible, not terrible. All right, we got Ho Oh Coral Coral promo. This is a P promo with the uh, E series border. One, two, three, four. Copies of Ho Oh. These are for whatever reason super tough to grade too. Yeah, these and these aren't gonna win any beauty contests either. Um, we have Morty's Nine Tails. Oh yeah, that one's nice, right? Two copies. That one also is nice with that indent. Uh, Septile one two copies from DP four. I don't remember what DP4 is offhand. Maybe like Moonlit Pursuer. Or this may be Dawn Dash. Nice little neck in the top of that one. Oh, this one's awesome. I, I think I have one of these in my collection. Hope I do, because if not, I should. Um, I think I think I put a copy of this aside. And maybe it was even in a video of this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have a copy of this. Uh, but this is a Meiji promo from ADVP. Has, this was this would have not been great at Border Gross. Oh yeah, she she's loved. But I, I love this card. It's an awesome Bulbasaur. Definitely one that I would if Ken Sumori did a signing that I'd be like, hey, you wanna sign that for me? All right, we got Churchwig. Oh, this is like a box set too. I think where these are like uniquely hollow to that, and I think the box is actually kind of expensive and these are kind of expensive like not expensive expensive but like more than what you would expect just because of like the other re release but i think there's because there's a pikachu that's hollow in the box we got one two three four copies of church wig yeah we got waiting on the bottom some nicks some scratching dark wheezing from rocky gang strikes back one two three four five six seven eight nine ten apparently dark wheezing was popular for this order don't look too bad on that one huh i'm uh, scratchy there i'm gonna go through this sub later and be like god this is so terrible which i usually i mean i'm expecting out of all this stuff maybe like one percent to be gradable 
I know that might sound crazy. I mean, 1% of 200 cars is like two cars. Well, maybe a little higher than 1%. Let's just say 5%, but not too bad in that one, though. All right. We've got Trico, constructed deck. This is like the Mudkip from earlier. Same thing. They did like three decks, Torchic, Mudkip, and uh, uh, Trico. Torchic, Mudkip, Trico. Yeah, I didn't know I said them. I, I got I to gotta think right now. We're, we're losing steam. It's quarter after three in the morning. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight copies of Trico. These are really good looking cards. Though. They did a really good job in the hollow. All right. The little bump at the bottom here, but overall pretty clean card there. Uh, we got Church Week Fan Club. One, two, three, three copies of that. Closing on the end here, guys. If you're still riding with me, I appreciate it. Sound really, really lame. If you're still riding with me, bruh. We got Selby. One, two, three, four copies of Selby from, I think, Secret of the Lakes. Nice swirl on this one. This is a really cute looking card. Nice amount of. Whitening, whitening. Scratchy. Uh, I think this is like Timeless Celebi from 10th Movie. One copy. Nick in the corner there. Pokey Park Celebi, PCGP. One, two, three copies. Mm, there's a definite wave in that one. You probably see it from here. Yeah, you can see how off it is. It's a good looking card though. Celebi doesn't have very many bad cards. Uh, Eevee, cool Delta Species Metal Typing from Holland Research Tower. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven copies. I might have showed this card off earlier too. Did I like mess up that too? No, I think this was that was that was the Meiji copy of it. There's a PCGP promo copy and then a set copy. Looks pretty clean that one. The, this one does not look pretty clean. Oof, I can feel that one. Yikes. We got Delta Species, Metal Typing Pico, one, two, three from Holland. This is Holland Phantoms on this one, I should have specified. Neck in the corner. Uh, Aura Zucario from the VS deck, one, two, three, four copies. Nice stand in the bottom of that one. We have Mewtwo, one, two, three, four copies from Moonlit Pursuit. Ooh, I like the orb on that, that one. It like amplifies the lightning bolt in the background, which you may not otherwise see very well. That's kind of cool. Doesn't look bad from here. Hmm, you got lucky on that one. I, I love this artwork uh, by Baba Shedinja from Clash of the Blue Sky. If I don't have one of these in my in my collection, I mean, it's not something that I'm, you know, going to need to rush out and grab, but at some point I will add one of these to my collection. I love Shedinja. I think the idea of, like, a Pokemon shedding its skin and then, like, becoming two Pokemon where, you know, uh, Ninkata involves into Ninjask and then the skin if you have an open spot becomes the shedinja i don't know i just i just think that's so cool i had shedinja in uh in i think it was ruby and sapphire and i just think this is such a cool pokemon but yeah that's awesome all right and then we have jirachi here is this hollow it is hollow is it? why does it not look hollow man that's the flattest non-sparkly hollow i think i've ever seen from a Japanese card. That's actually kind of geeking me out a little bit. Is it like an error? It's like definitely not normal. It's definitely strange, but I don't remember what deck this is. Maybe from like a Metagross deck or something, but fortunately I have one copy, so we can't really tell if there's an issue with it, but that is a very... F oh, wait. I just caught a glimmer. There we go. There we go. Okay. She's got sparkles. There we go. I just took the right lighting, but yeah, it's the last card in this. Um, again, $1,400 for this stuff. Uh, if you think I did great, comment down below. If you think I didn't, comment that down below either. Uh, if you have any questions, comment that down below too. Don't really care. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm never really upset about these buys. I'm always happy. I love buying. I mean, everybody loves buying. Um, it's always fun to go through this stuff. Just look at the cards, see them, and I don't know, just take it all in. Um, yeah, I mean, this is probably becoming one of my favorite series just because, like, I get to actually, like, focus in and look at a lot of this stuff. I mean, the PSA returns are cool. The submissions are cool. But, like, this, like, getting the stuff in and, like, buying these orders and stuff like that, I don't know. That's just, for me... That's my jam. That's my jam. But yeah, that about wraps it up for this one. Um, as always, like, subscribe, comment down below, or don't. But either way, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you.